Prince. You know what we can do, Prince? We can just watch you. We can just watch you vibe out the whole time. Listen, you know, once Yo. that is on, I just get vibing. Yeah, you can just vibe out here the whole time. We'll just watch you. <laughs> After a while, you'd be like, okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody told me, like, I was uh, uh, doing a podcast interview, and they were like, you know, you used to always say, like, hey, beautiful people. What's that? And I was like, uh, so we're just going to get started. And, uh, you know, whoever joins us for this conversation joins us. And as people come in and out, I might say, hey, you know, welcome. If, if you're just tuning in, we're having a conversation about what does an awakening mean to you, that sort of thing. So um, just to kind of like set the space. Oh my God, I'm so excited because I have some of the most important people in my life here. I don't know where Lily went. She just kind of <laughs> noticed. So I'm, I'm super excited to have this conversation with some people that I love very deeply, who I've been a part of this whole, <laughs> this whole journey. And I thought it'd be interesting to have a conversation because we all have very different experiences of, of this whole journey um, and have a different definition of what it means for us. And also because it's not a conversation that happens often. Like, I don't know, maybe it does and just hasn't come into my peripheral. But um, I think it'd be better to just like talk about what that path was. So some of the things that we're going to be talking about is like, what was the, the thing that happened, right? I'm going to obviously do some introductions, right? But just to tell the audience, what was the thing that happened in your life that had you say, oh, wait a minute, you know, something doesn't seem right. You know, you started to just be curious about the, uh, the narrative that you've kind of absorbed over the years. When that shift happened, and also as a result of that shift, you know, how do you define meaning into your present day? And, you know, there's always steps in between, right, that happens. So I don't know how long this is going to go. This is unscripted. And I'm excited about it because I love unscripted raw conversations. It's a lot more that way. Uh, before we jump right into it, why don't you guys just kind of introduce yourself? You're going to hear the photo fights because it's the Dominican Republic, okay? You might hear some boom, chicken, boom, boom. The back <laughs> of the you know? You're going to hear all of it. Uh, yeah, if you want to, let me see. I will start with Malika. Introduce <laughs> <laughs> yourself. Hi, I am Malika. Um, I am a student of life, you know, just on my journey and just here to love and explore everything, I guess. Awesome. I love that. Malika, my sister. So I've also had. I see her growth in this whole process, which has been beautiful. All right, next, let's go. Samaya. Hey, hey. Hey, hey guys. I'm Samaya. And um, that question is always interesting, but I am similar to Malika. I'm a lover of life. I love to travel. I'm a business owner, and I'm forever dedicated to just evolving as the best version of myself. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> She's so cute. She's so cute. And she has like the best skin too. She has the best skin. <laughs> and last and certainly not least, Lily. What's up? I hate introductions, I'll be honest. I just feel it's like so weird and like formulaic. Hi, yeah. my name is Lily. I come from the US and I was born you? out of my mom's womb. Thank you. Who are you? Put the flashlight in your face. Who are you? <laughs> uh I'm a I'm a filmmaker, I'm a storyteller, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a I'm just I'm just here for a short time on this planet Earth. I'm just I'm here to I'm here to vibe and just bring some joy. That's what I'm here for. I so. love that. That's love awesome. That. I love that. And my name is Francis. I'm a trained therapist operating as a coach and I help folks find healing, plant medicines and transformative coaching. 
uh, and that's what I do. I'm also a writer, but I do podcast hosts. But you know, you can click the link, the link in bio. You can find <laughs> just kidding. All right, so let's just get started. Um, who would like to? My question to right now on the table is like, what was that moment of shift that you knew something was a bit different? And what I mean by different is, it's almost like almost an out of body experience. Like you're like, whoa, <laughs> like am I really here in this space? Or and I don't want to describe it for you, or put any words, but like you just like you just this light switch. Yeah, you just like throw in that question like real quick, and so we're just like, oh damn. Yeah, that's a big question. It's a big question. Yeah. First. Oh, you, you have something? Well, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> somebody's like, I'm going to let this gonna say, marinate. I feel like there's something happens before there's the aha, right? And so there's kind of like the dark part of it, mm. or there's the not so comfortable part of it. And then maybe you just have this subtle but most powerful, more powerful moment where you're like, I'm living and nothing else like you know what I mean so I think there's a leading up to it so maybe that's what we're referring to and I think that's there but yeah, not like when the complete because it's never like a complete life switch because infinite awakenings but like that little you know when the feather tickles you under your chin kind of thing you know um so I'm curious is that how that works I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how it works <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> is like, you know, awakenings are like feathers. Just they, a little. They tickle you a little bit. You have a bit of a comedian in the house. <laughs> I, I, um, I can speak on that, first of all. Um, I've, during my research, um, I found out or something like death in the family, friend, will usually spark an awakening, like a loss of something. So for me, my loss was losing my father. Me and Francis lost our father in like 2016. And after that, losing him, you know, trying to sort out my grief and figure out, you know, where do I belong? What's my next steps? What do I do after that? Um, I can definitely see how I was... Uh, not in contact with myself. I just disassociated with myself for so long that I didn't know what my emotions, what my feeling was. And to even to try to tap into that, I was at a loss. Mm -hmm. So I could say that was the epitome, like the peak of trying to, you know, get into contact, like figure out, like you said, who are you, Malika? And trying to describe myself to everybody without going through life like in an automatic state. And that was typically caused by, you know, childhood trauma and trying to uh, feel safe within my own personal space by guarding everybody from me. And that was, you know, where it started, basically. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you make, like, a good point about how, like, it just, it takes that sometimes, like, extra, it, it's amazing that it has, yeah. something has to be so tragic sometimes mm -hmm. to really, it's like hitting the wall in order for you to be like, oh, okay, it all makes sense. Because I do feel like along the way there's, awakening is such a weird word because it feels like it has to be this huge tornado or volcano eruption, but sometimes there's like little nuggets along the way and you, it's not, it, what happens is that sometimes you just don't listen to it fully, right? Mm -hmm. There's like little moments of becoming aware of something, but you're like, ah, ah, that's okay, it's okay. Let's just keep sweeping that under the rug. And then when things like that happen, you just can't. And I think I had little nuggets throughout my whole life, and especially with, um, I'll say like, in terms of medical, anytime mm -hmm. I, there was a, quite a few times where I went into the doctor with something, almost like putting all my trust into the medical system and getting an answer that just felt so off, so mm. wrong. And that's when my inner voice started just getting louder. And louder like this is this is not not only is this not okay but something's wrong and so it was like me finally having to listen to my own voice about that and I think 2020 really just made people face it once and for all everything yeah. 
where do you want to live? Who do you want to be with? You know, uh, everything, your health, er everything. And so I feel like that for me was the biggest push. But before that, there was like smaller pushes, I think. And it really came more like medical, medical wise. You know? Breadcrumbs, right? These us breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to like pick them up. And, yeah, this is. Or not. No? Yeah, um, so. What about you, Simone? To kind of piggyback off of that, there is like, unfortunately, I think most of the times where it's a not so lovely place to be in where you kind of start to pay attention to those breadcrumbs. And so for me, I'd say it was probably around 2005 where I started that journey, right? I, like not really having a positive image of myself or just I'd, I guess I'd say low self-esteem, um, looking for people to validate me and all of these things. And I was in a um, relationship for a long period of time. And um, in 2005, that's when everything kind of like just hit the fan, right? It was like, and all of that. And it was kind of like, uh, it was it was that moment where I had enough of going through a lot of those old habits and behaviors. And it was kind of like, okay, what are you going to do? Right. So unfortunately, but fortunately, that pain led me to this place of really isolation. But it wasn't like isolation in like a dark way. But it felt dark to me because I didn't know how to be by myself. In that, and that like leading up to that point, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so I remember one time, and then it also, because we shared a group of friends, it also came with, like, now I had to separate that. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't do that anymore. And so I remember sitting on my mother's bed, and I was just sad, right? Like, sad because I wanted people to understand. Like, I wanted to have someone to go through that process with me, and I just didn't. And I sat on the bed. I just literally cried. And it always still makes me cry, but not cry in a way that, like, in, I'm sad. Kind of like one of those. I love, I think, you know, everybody touched on a few things. It was like loss, right? And it was mixing. Like when you start to be like, ah, something doesn't add up. And then the other thing is like, you know, relationships are mirrors and that could definitely catapult you into sort of like, whoa, what is life kind of thing, right? Um, I, for me, I remember, and I, I'm gonna age myself, but I was like, fun. And uh, I, I just, it was weird. Like, I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and it was the, um, the impermanence of that that like spooked me, yet I also wanted to understand what it meant to die. And so I've got mm. wanting to understand death and to find the peace in that because it's inevitable, right? And, I, and I, I'm a lot better. I can't say I'm there yet, but that started the whole path. And then, of course, like life happens, right? And you get distracted and you don't really pay attention to those breadcrumbs. And then it wasn't until getting into the mental health industry and burning out that I realized, I was like, yo, something's missing, man. Like, so what is, something's just not connecting for me. And I realized that what was missing in the industry, and even for myself, was like, spirit. like what does it, any of this mean? You know, what is the spirit? You know, um, like, how do I find the feeling that I need? Like, where, like, what do I do? And, you know, that's when I just kind of, like, went on that solo journey. Uh, just like you, Samaya, talking about the isolation, because the isolation, and then the, 
that's where you kind of, you know, you find, you find some of those answers in stillness. And, um, and of course, you have to get into, like, the process of, like, well, now that you have this feeling, where do you go? So along your journey, like, did you have people that you could, like, tap into? Was it totally internal? Did you read books? Like, how did you get a better understanding of what was happening inside? Yeah, you bring up a great point with the aloneness. Like, now that Samaya brought that up, you know, it, it's like, uh, I remember a mentor one time describing to me is like, you're, you're in the toddler phase again, right? When you're, when you're in that phase, you're learning how to walk and act and talk again, because this, that whatever thing that happened, like you said, Francis, it's a debt, it, it's gone but you still don't know how to be in that new body or that new awake state. And so there's like a toddler phase and it's almost like that aloneness space that I feel I also had was new for me because as an extrovert, this, this is very, very painful, but I knew how necessary it was just to have everything come from me. Right. I felt like I hung out honestly with a lot of trees. <laughs> I was like, going every day to like the same park and I was just staring at a tree for hours mm. hours and I'm so grateful for it now like I just kept thinking like when is this going to be over kind of like you know Samaya was just like wow can I feel this much pain alone by myself like can, is this gonna go away right and you know it's gonna go away but I couldn't speak to old friends I knew that I couldn't do that. I couldn't speak to anybody who was going to take me back to that place. Um, but I think at least having one or two people during that time who totally saw me and heard me, like totally. I think that that was, I, realizing now how big that was, right? Realizing now like, oh, wow, we got through this thing together. So, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely speak on that to say I'm mostly an introvert, I could say. I'm used to dealing with things by myself. Um, isolation is my where I'm most comfortable at. And so once I was done with my isolation of you know, trying to figure out who I am and where I belong, I reached out and, you know, took a class. And that was the best thing to talk to people who are going um, through a journey, not my journey, but they're going along the same path with me. And we can discuss various, you know, experiences that we have. And then there's a teacher who can bring us back to circle, to center, to hear you know, <laughs> together. So that was really, and then now I'm back to isolation, but that was really awesome to have. <laughs> I'm in my natural state. <laughs> you're like, now screw y'all. Screw y'all again. I don't need to talk to you anymore. <laughs> I'll be back out there. But yeah, that's my natural state. But to actually reach out and have people to talk to. And I can honestly say, too, with Francis, we went through a lot of experiences, a lot of ceremonies together. And it was awesome to have her with there with me to you know share what we went through and oh my god did you feel that too did you see that it's you know amazing to have so yeah yeah oh big sis there yeah Bye, smile <laughs> And of course, that's not a good thing because you can tell yourself whatever. Um, but then I started to go to church, uh, and then that's where I built a community there, and then I had support. And then slowly but surely, you, know, you start meeting people that you can call like your big sister in Christ or whatever, and then you have those moments where you get to share. And so uh, I think, yeah, for me, that was like in the beginning, no. And then as the journey kept going, that's where I found my, like, my tribe and, and my help. So. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. You found your high vibe tribe, right, Samaya? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so although there's like benefits to, and I want to say solitude instead of isolation, right? Because it's always like, it was me at least. Uh, but you, you, you almost, you, you go inward and then you have to take space because I know for me, when I was going through the process, there was so much static and I couldn't hear my own voice. And so I had to, to take that solitude. And then from there, it's like, okay, we still need community, right? We still need, we're, we're still human, right? Having this, um, <laughs> what do you call it? We're still human having some sort of alien, earthly something experience or something, right? Yeah, whatever this is. <laughs> whatever this, whatever is. this thing is. Guys, we're not here. But, um, <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> it's just a holographic reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you, you still need that community because it's so crucial when you are in that space to be able to to have those conversations out loud, right? To take them out inside, to have them out loud. Um, so the process of like developing community, understanding the solitude uh, that, you know, I know was great for all of them. Were there any like responses to like family, like external? I read this meme the other day. I was like, the, the family member who's isolated is the one <laughs> The spiritual awakening. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Tin foil hat. Tin foil hat. They're in their they're in their basement, you know? I remember my mom saying asking me, uh, are you doing are you doing L S D? No joke. But it was like it was it was kind of a jab, you know? It was like a little bit of a jab and a little bit of curiosity, but I was mostly a jab. And instead of just being curious, you know, about like, it's like, yo, you know, people change, right? <laughs> uh, and, you know, um, but it was an interesting, interesting, it was like, oh, the perceptions of you are going to be wild, wild, and you have to be okay with that. And I think that's something that's really beautiful about that is it wasn't just family members, but it was also old friends. Mm. For once in my life, I was okay with being misunderstood. Whereas before, like old Lily would have been like, I really want everybody to like me. I really need everybody to understand me. Like, how can I make them like me? And it was almost like so empowering being like, I'm, I'm actually like, okay with that. Like, go with that. Go with the LSD thing. Like, have fun with that. I, <laughs> let me know about what my visions are. Like, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and so that was like super empowering. I think I went through a, a struggle period where I did worry about what people were going to think, but it didn't last for very long. And you guys know that that doesn't last for very long. <laughs> I so, think yeah. I um, always had a mom that was supportive, obviously. It was the journey in the right direction. The right direction, and so, um, but I say that <laughs> so it was right for me. But you know, I was always supportive in that, so I didn't really have any like, what are you doing? What's going on? More of just kind of like, oh, this is lovely. As a result, I feel like I had a lot more um, very vulnerable conversations with my mom about stuff that I had never even thought I would share with her. And we ended up having those moments, and that was beautiful. I think probably the most, and I'm not even going to say backlash, just, um, yeah, like, I would just say I felt like I was misunderstood by my group of friends. Um, and I... Nope. We're losing her in her awakening. <laughs> She's glitching. You're glitching the matrix, Samaya, right now. What'd you say, Samaya? She's glitching. Shoot. Sometimes your your energy is just too powerful <laughs> for these things. <laughs> I'm telling you. Life can't take you sometimes. You start talking about an awakening, they will shut you down. <laughs> <laughs> they will shut you down. <laughs> Damn. 
back to uh we'll get back to her um yeah all right okay. we'll so i would say most of my reviews not reviews but most of my experiences throughout friends i've noticed that i really can't talk to them anymore my old friends cuz they'll be like what we talking about i feel like yeah the matrix is real they're like you what are you crazy <laughs> I like how you said most of your reviews, like you're getting Yelp reviews from like old friends, you know? You're like, Malika used to hang out with me and talk well, trash that's, about that's, Shelly that's down the it. corner, but now she's talking to me about The Matrix, and I'm like, isn't that just a movie? And she's like, no, that's a documentary. <laughs> this is real life. But no, I just feel like because, you know, people are – put you in a box you know they categorize you and then they think oh this is the way that she acts this is the way that she will continue to act yeah. and then once you break out of that box you're like what are you doing so to me when you know i came back from traveling and i was in my room all the time my cousin was like are you depressed what's wrong with you why are you in the room <laughs> And I'm just chilling, you know, just hanging out. And it was funny because with my mom, she's better at it now, but she's very like devout Christian, you know, religious and all that. And when I was doing my meditation and I had mantras or mutras, and I did it with my fingers, she was like, Are you saluting Satan? I was like, What are you talking about? <laughs> You're like, Yes. <laughs> Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> those have been a lot of mixed reviews but i'm learning to <laughs> not care like lily says because your person uh your perception of me doesn't matter because i'm not that person i'm free not i have more space and to be the malika from today and change it up to tomorrow it doesn't matter which you view me i'm just going to be myself always so that's what i'm learning on this journey and it doesn't matter like if the old malika will do something the new malika will do it differently mm. you know what I'm saying? and i like how you said that cuz it, it could be day by day it could be minute by minute right yeah. you have the right to change any minute that you'd like you know and I think it's glorious because you can kind of show other people that, like, you know, you don't have to live in that box, right? Yeah. You don't have to you live, don't in box. live in the box. So. I love that. It's kind of what you said earlier, um, Lily, when you said Tara says, every day you're a different person. And it doesn't mean that, like, your core values might remain the same, but just like your wisdom, you know what I mean? Your connection to yourself expands over time. And that's what uh, we were open, right? Because once you start making those changes, and people who are so comfortable and used to you being this way, it makes them uncomfortable. So then they bring in all this. Like, yep. Like, like pow, 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 you know, you got like, you know, you got like, <laughs> um, but Samaya, before you had got, you were like, like a man. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? Samaya, I'm so again. distracted by her makeup. Like, she looks so amazing. I don't have makeup. Oh, I have some. Oh. That's her skin, baby. She's like, yeah, I, I have, have makeup on. on. This is me. me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, you, were, you were on something. We want to hear you. Yeah. Well, no, I was just saying how, like, um, the, the back, not backlash, but the only... I feel like I was misunderstood by the group of friends that I was uh, with at that time and had to do a bit of separation in that season. Um, and it, it it was like they were taking it as if I if maybe I felt as if I was better than them. Yep. And that wasn't that yep. because, I mean, I never mistreated anyone or said, I can't hang out with you guys. But I guess my behavior was kind of giving that vibe. And it's just very interesting, like, later on to have had that conversation. Like, what was going on in your head or, you know, yep. your head during that season of my life? Um, because that's obviously not my, not my, not what my heart was thinking or anything like that. It was just kind of like what needed to be done in order for me to get to that place of healing and really being comfortable 
with being me and being solo, you know? And so, yeah, I think that was really the only um, backlash. <laughs> but again, I didn't really know that per se until like later, so. Oh, later, yeah. They're like, you're like, damn, she levitated, you know? She levitated out of our lives. You know, right? Like, people fall off. I want to encourage folks, like, when you go through a process of connecting to yourself or your higher self, or whatever you want to name it, um, it, it, it clears the <laughs> It literally does. And it almost feels like something is wrong. Nothing is wrong. If, ever, if you ever feel like something is wrong, that's like old program trying to tell you that you need to stay over here somewhere. Because when you go through this process, you shed. It's like you, say, you just shed, and you shed, and you shed. And that is very pivotal for that growth. Um, so when you were going through that discomfort, what was, what was the, uh, I guess, what was the, I don't even know how to describe it, because some of these things don't have words, but what was the feeling for you when you felt like, oh, this makes sense. You felt very settled in that. And I'm almost convicted, right? Like, you just like, yeah, this, this, this. I'm okay. Mm. <laughs> you know? Damn. Damn. Damn, girl. Like, I didn't have some easy <laughs> questions. Like, what did you eat today? You know? Like, what did... <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> well, I, I guess I can start because I have something that came to mind. Or I Ooh, nice. So I think also during that time, it was me like stepping out of my show. A lot of things was transforming for me, like physically um, and just me being more comfortable with being out there. And so I was like, you know, I had graduated obviously um with a bachelor's in computer science but then i really wasn't working in the field and i was doing wedding planners assistant but then i was doing some modeling and then i was doing like all of these other things and i remember working like half day and i was doing like um office managing or whatever and i would work half day during the morning and then in the afternoon, I'd go into the city and just go on, like, all these open calls. And I tell you, every time, they'd be like, no, no, we have someone that look like you. You're too short. No, 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 no. And I, I heard that over and over and over again. And I remember, you know, I, and sometimes that can really get to you. And you're like, whoa, I'm done, right? The first day, second day. But I kept going. And I remember one day coming home. And I just sat on my grandma's bed, and I'm like, ah, I'm good. God, I love you. I literally, and that is the moment, like, I literally was like, that is weird. Because you just, like, I just had experienced all these rejections. Like, everyone's telling me, no, 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 no. And this is something that I really felt comfortable in doing, right? So this is yeah. me getting out my, my shell and like, oh, my gosh, I'm walking on the runway, and I'm really comfortable doing this. Yeah. And, like, I just was told no, 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 but I came home and my heart was so full. Like, damn, it was like my first moment of joy. And it wasn't that stuff, but it was me being like really connected in my relationship with him. And so I knew from that mm. moment, like, that's what had to happen. So, I damn, think. you know, that's real too, because, like, you know, I'm coming from LA where you know that people don't come back from audition after audition going like, I am worthy. I am beautiful. I am, I am whole. I am, they are not coming home with that energy. <laughs> They're like going to their Botox appointment, you know, just to make sure or whatever. But, <laughs> so that's big though. That actually is big. It seems so small, but it's like huge. It's huge mm -hmm. because that's like for once it came from within and the universe like threw you a pass was like, hey, yo, I'm going to throw you something. I hope you catch it, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I dig that. I don't have a story like that, but so you guys keep going. <laughs> <laughs> then you just throw the ball to me. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys, are, you guys keep going. I'm just going to light my Palo Santo stuff right here while you <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> What was the moment that when, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what, you felt like, 
settled in 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 I guess your being, I guess. I like I get like I said, it's hard to put into words. But what was that moment where you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. This feels good. I'm feeling very convinced. Um, for me, I guess it would be when I challenged um my biggest fear of all was heights. And <laughs> and I always said, even though I'm scared of heights, I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to go oh, skydiving. Oh, damn. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I finally went to go do it um, with my friend. And the whole journey, my God. <laughs> you board a small plane, shakes all the time. And then the instructors give you five-minute lessons. You ready? I guess. <laughs> Strap you in. Are you ready? Get on the plane. And then I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. Why did I come up here? I, I think I'm just going to stay back. And then something in my mind just told me, like, no, you're already up here. What's the point of staying on? So I was just like, okay, let me do it. So I finally dove off the plane, you know, rush a wind into your face. Even with the glasses on, it was hard to see. And I closed my eyes, but then I was like, don't be a punk bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta open your eyes and see. So compassionate. <laughs> so compassionate with self. I know. You know, don't be a punk bitch, John. You might die. <laughs> so as I was, after the wind rush and I was free falling, I was just like, oh my God. I feel awesome. I covered my fear. Like this is great. I had a great um, view of like the fall trees. The colors were everywhere. It was just awesome. I just felt like such a peace, balance, and I was just like, yes, I want more of that. Oh, I, like, damn. like I that's what I need in my life. And I feel like I followed those steps by like traveling with you know Francis and Samaya getting to see the countryside and just going back into nature. That's yeah. what I was doing. Damn, you did top the story though. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, I have a cheesy one. one. <laughs> I have a cheesy one. Mine's more cheesy. Uh, Frances knows one of my very first mentors because she went to one of her retreats, but I met her like over 10 years ago. And it was kind of at a time where you know how like when you hear people back in the day talk like self-growth language and self-love like until you like know or feel what that means it's kind of like yo y'all are hippies like i just can't i can't with you like you know you can read the books but you're like great that sounds great you know <laughs> great those are people that just are like oh peace love stare at a tree like i've been doing but what I remember after being done with her retreat and we did so much releasing, like I didn't realize how much my body was holding on to. It was just stored. We had a whole weekend of just release, a lot of somatic release, a lot of connection with other women, a lot of staring in each other's eyes, a lot of just, <laughs> just pure, like no phones either. First time I probably didn't have like a phone around trying to distract me. And then I remember all of a sudden, I was sitting on an ex-boyfriend's porch. Sometimes when you go forward, you go backward, and then you go forward again. But I was sitting on his porch. <laughs> you, you know how that goes. But whatever, he's a nice guy. So I, I was sitting on the porch, and I just all of a sudden was like looking at the sunset. And I was like, oh, I get it. And he was like, get what? I was like, everybody is one. <laughs> And, I was, and he was like down with it. He was like, yep, you feel it, right? And I was like, yep. And, and I was no, like, I became no one of those people. You know? Like, you I, the no substance is nothing. It was all natural. No, this was all natural. No substance. After mm. that, after that, I did have wine. After, you know. After I had some wine. I saw God and then, <laughs> and then oh, drank the yeah. juice. <laughs> I've been your friend that's a hippie. <laughs> yeah, and then I became a hippie. So look at me now. On the hippies are all love, though. All love. Yeah, they forget about their life from that. Yeah. Because we going we gonna to work through them or not? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, okay, for, for me, it was, 
I was in an interesting space being somebody who was, you know, a social worker, social justice. It was really hard for me to understand how, okay, if there's this beautiful goodness, why is this all this beautiful, like this terrible badness? Kind of and I grappled with those realities for a while because there are so many causes that were, uh, that I was passionate about, like I cared about. And but I, I just couldn't shake the fact that I couldn't understand vision, like what was going on. And so it wasn't until I took those same classes, get to hear a shout out to Hero. Um, I took oh, hi, to <laughs> oh, hi, to hero. conversations. <laughs> and it was through those classes and through those conversations. And that was all in my head, and she knew it, you know. And Lily was there, all in my head. And so I was like, well, why this? Why that? Oh, my God. And then eventually, I started thinking. I was like, oh, there is no, there is, um, the division is on purpose. Mm -hmm. So, yep. oh, that's right. you know what I mean? And, and uh, me and Samara reminiscing because we had a whole conversation about racism, right? We had a whole conversation. And I was giving it to her, and I was like, you know, and I was talking to my little friends, like, you know, I had a hard time on the screen, but I realized how much, how many social concepts that I bought into. It's real. And I'm like, holy shit. And, and that's when I realized, like, you, Lily, like, we really are just one and all interconnected and every one of us is projecting this vision that we collectively agreed to be the truth you stragglers on the outside like no <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> right and um and so that's for me and i started to explore that and then you know working with the plant medicines that's when everything got even clearer Everything got deep, and I started to realize, like, wow, fight is not out there. The fight is right in here. And I don't even Revolution is on the inside. I know it sounds, y'all. It sounds hokey, but I, I swear to you. <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> the truth. And more that you are distracted from doing your own healing, you can go out there fight and all the fights and protests and do all these things. And I'm not saying there's no need for some sort of friction to kind of like make changes. I'm not saying that that's not important. And, you know, how's your relationship with your parents? How's your relationship with your family, your friends? How's your relationship with yourself? yourself. We right? And so I started to see so many distractions were in place to keep away from me. Yeah. And that's like, I yeah, I'm at Sahira, <laughs> June 2020. We all know June 2020, what was going on. The National Guard was four blocks from my house. There was helicopters every single day over my house. L.A. had a curfew to come in at 2 p.m. And the same words came to me. I was like, the, the revolution is not out there. Like, just something in me. Because the energy was so, like, I feel like I was in a pressure cooker. Because the energy was so intense, that's how I saw clearly. I was like, something ain't, something's not right. Something's not right. And I feel like I finally see like, this has always been happening. It's just like rebranding has been happening, right? Mm. There's just a rebrand, like put a new name on it, put a new cause on it, put a new sticker on it so that I am hijacked, so that my nervous system is hijacked and I follow the crowd, I follow the crowd, you know? like so that i'm so that i'm away from myself that's the whole point just to be mm -hmm. away from myself you know yeah yeah and so and i love what you said and i was listening to this podcast and i sent it to to Samaya, and it was really powerful one of said one of his favorite quotes and i wrote it down I was like guys those two things that he said he said to fight fire is to be infected by its during say that again yeah say it again <laughs> To fight the empire, it's deranged. Huh? Mm -hmm. Say it again. Put it down, Just in case the people in the back didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
text in the chat. <laughs> you keep breaking up. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Yes, now. <laughs> and so you talk. <laughs> it's gone. You know what I mean? Like it's gone out the window. <laughs> Something about the empire. Oh, now I said to fight the empire, you have to be infected by its derangement. Mm. Ooh. I like that. Affected by its hate, you have to. There's a commonality that is there in order for you to be in that space, right? And then he says you have to choose between punishment and healing. You have to choose. You know, yeah. it's either it's either trauma bonding or self exploration. That's how I see it. You want the blue pill, or the red pill? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just get that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I just got tired of being emotionally hijacked. Right. Mm. Like, like emotion, like on edge, and I had too much rage in my body. And, and for the past year, especially starting in 2020, I really wanted to work through that rage. I didn't want to rage. Anymore. You know, anger has its place. And of course, you know, rage just to release. But I just didn't want to hate. Mm. Mm. And I, for me, God, it was exhausting. Right? Yep. You can only imagine what those people do on a daily basis because you're holding all that stuff in your body. And then you have to go off and try to like be a person, <laughs> and, like live a life, you know? So it got to be too much. I had to take it the path. Wow. Inspiring. Wow. This is, this is, uh, this is good. So let's take a moment of breathe in. Uh, everybody breathe. <laughs> we do a lot of deep breathing here, guys. We're going to do a lot of deep breathing, and we're going to see oneness before you leave. Okay, everyone? Okay. Um, so we the are <laughs> right? Didn't that what the year says? Close out the circle. <laughs> close out the circle. Yeah, how are you going to close out the circle? We are going to close We have one last question. Oh, uh, man. Kind of wrap it up. We're wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. I got things to do. I'm in DR. <laughs> yeah. What are you asking? Yeah. Oh. oh, you got you got come in here and have a whole ass conversation about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I things to do. People need to see me. <laughs> uh, so, as you, what I would love to know is, like in this present day, like how how are you doing in this? Right, he had all these epiphanies, these awakenings. Again, we always have infinite awakenings. Like, how do you view things now? Mm. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. I've I've learned how to just chill with it. Like, I like it. I like where it, where it's at right now, and just letting it flow, and just like being open to like what happens. Whereas before, I feel like I wanted control. I wanted to know where I'm going. I wanted to have a plan. I wanted to check the boxes. And now I don't care. And I noticed the languaging is different, right? Like when people ask me, like, even like, what do you do for a living? I don't know. Sometimes I play with that. I'm like, I chill. I chill out. I hang out. You know, because I, really like, I just don't want to have those conversations anymore. When you live in LA, that's all you do. It's like, what do you do and who do you know? Like, mm -hmm. I don't really care. And then, and I just, that's where, how I know that it's like, I just want to connect with the person in the moment and like, see, like make it a little dance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to dance with people. I want, so I like want to dance with my life and that might change. And I think I also handle like the emotional part better. Like I know if I'm sad, like t earlier today, I was telling Francis, I was like, I'm sad. And I was like, can we take my sadness for a walk? <laughs> and she's like, sure. <laughs> So instead of like getting pulled into the drama yeah. of it, it's like, okay, whatever shows up, I'm, I'm here. Beautiful. Yeah, I can definitely relate to um, you saying how, you know, wait, sorry, brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> I asked her to repeat the question because technically I was having bad signal. So I didn't really know oh. the question. Anyway, oh, she so. needs to repeat the question. Prompt yeah, she, she was gonna she was gonna she was asking you what your favorite food was. 
No, oh. I, I kind of gather what the question was from based on your response. It was kind of like oh, okay. how do you deal with something? How do you deal with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, how are you doing now, and how how are you showing up now? Mm -hmm. Like knowing all the things that happened and the experiences that you had, the insights, the epiphanies, and all that stuff. Like, how are you today? Mm -hmm. Oh, my train thought is back. I was gonna say, Lou, I. <laughs> I relate to the fact when people always ask me, like, what do you do for a living? I don't want to answer that. What does it mean? What do you do? You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, right now I'm in my experimental phase, and I just feel like the fact I'm more aware of, you know, how my emotions are feeling. And I remember I had a conversation with my sister, my younger sister. She was very upset. And I just felt like this overcoming sadness. And I had to take a moment and be like, all right, I'm going to call you back in a second. Pause, you know, recalibrate myself and be like, this is not what you're feeling. You can feel very just happy, you know, feeling relaxing. And now you're just bombarded with emotional, you know, turmoil because of her. It's okay to take a breath relax and then just go back to her and not call her back. So right now I'm more aware of my emotions better than before. And I just feel proud of myself and I'm just ready to travel this is this I've learned, you know, writing books and yeah. I love that. I make some Samaya, Samaya you there? Samaya. Hello. Hello, guys. Okay. Am I there? Yes. <laughs> Maya, do you need okay. the question repeated again? <laughs> no, but my Wi-Fi. So anyway, I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Um, I think for me, how I'm showing up is really kind of how I said earlier on. It's just really being the best version of myself. Um, I kind of just really do what I want to do and when I want to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, even when we, when there's like a lot of stuff going on in the world or whatever, it, for me, I know it can seem as if it's, it's a matter of, I don't care, but I, I don't think it's, it's not that, not, I think it's not that <laughs> it's more so <laughs> like, I have to do my part in the way that I can do my part, right? And so I can't take on that. And I learned, um, one of the, the things I learned from my sabbatical was that, like, I took on, similar to what Malika was saying, um, I took on a lot of stuff from other people because naturally I am like, oh, you bring me something, I want to fix it. Well, not necessarily want to fix it, but also want to help you fix it, right? So there's kind of a resolution there that I'm looking to get. And so I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I don't, not even that I'm not, because, you know, maybe a little bit, but it's like, I don't have to do that, right? And so that was free. So Maya but, just yeah. told me the other day, I'm not trying to be in nobody's business. It's none of my business. I don't need to be in anybody's <laughs> business. <laughs> and I'm getting right back to that, too, because, you know, when you start being in everybody's business and trying to help everybody and all that, you, you get you go back to that. You go right back to what you come out mm -hmm. of. So for me, it was kind of like, a, and, and it's funny because it, I'm going to share my story, okay? So, like, <laughs> I was walking one day. And I don't know what happened, Francis. I told you. I don't know what happened. But it was kind of like... Um, you know how you're talking, just chit chatting, chit chatting, and you, like call them bong chi chatas, like Spanish is bong chi chatas. And like you're just chatting, chatting, and then you realize like something's just kind of like shut up, right? And you're like, you heard it, but you try to ignore it. And then like you hear it again or you feel it again, and it's like, it's useless chatter. Like you're not it's, trying to. It's diarrhea. Anything. You're not, yeah, you're not trying it's to. Just diarrhea. Anything. That's you're all it is. Trying, you're, you're not you're not adding to anything you're not empowering anything, like anything and so it was kind of like a samaya like wheel that back in right and so for me it's, again it's just kind of like stay in focus yes i'm minding my business i'm showing up in my most authentic self and i want to just lean into that vulnerability and i want to continue to love that's really what my mission is it's just love so my quote is be your own hero because nobody's coming. It's only you. Nobody's coming. Just you. What you gonna do? 
Listen. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, so I had a conversation with a founder last week who said the system isn't broken. It's perfect the way it was meant to, to the way it was created, right? It's perfect for what it does. And that felt like, oh, yeah, you know? And that relief was like, oh, I got to worry about that. Uh, so, again, just like Samantha, I'm just focusing on love. How can I bring more love into the world and into myself first? So I can bring it to the world and then provide spaces for people to have these types of experiences so that they can come back to themselves. And that's where, that's where it needs to go, right? And so, and I'm just having fun with life. I'm just like you, I'm experimenting, I'm playing, I'm making shit up all the time. I'm making like, <laughs> I'm up. It's like making fake names and whatever. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, making stuff up as I go. But that's, that's the beautiful part of living when you can just flow in that direction instead of, like you said, Lily, be all this in these boxes and, and just be restricted. We're not meant to be restricted. That's that's bogus. So I'm here having fun, creating life, because I am the, I don't even like the word master. I can't say nothing now these days with this etymology. But I... <laughs> <laughs> I am the creator. Yeah. And I'm going to create my experiences and, and create my life, and, and then and that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's very true because, like, if you think about it, everything was created, made up. Everybody made up something. The desk you're sitting on, the, the phone, everybody just made Ooh. up something. The that's it. <laughs> we just were like, oh, yeah, like collecting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we can talk about this for like days. Did you have something to say? No, we can't hear you. Are you muted? Sorry, I was muted, and I was like talking to myself. Um, yeah. but I, <laughs> I need for the past two minutes. <laughs> which, which sometimes I think I, that like, Samaya, Samaya would appreciate. She's like, yeah, Lily needs to like sit in the corner and just like talk to herself. So <laughs> I was just gonna say, I feel like. Francis's life is a lot more lit too, because I live right across the street from her now. You know, so I just wanted to add that. <laughs> And on that note, and on that note, it's lit. And on that note, <laughs> for this conversation, you know, maybe we'll Wait. do it again. Cl close your, close the circle, shaman. Oh yes, get a close the circle. Yeah, close the circle. What are you gonna do? Are right, you gonna face the east, west, north, south? <laughs> <laughs> is she gonna call? I got the way I'm doing. What you Oh, there you go. <laughs> It feels complete. I feel it. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for joining me for this conversation and, and being so open and vulnerable during your experiences because it's in these conversations that people can actually like connect, right? And know that they're not alone in this journey. Um, of course, I wish you lots of love blessings and I know that we will reconnect <laughs> alright guys <Bye. laughs> thank you bye, bye. Lord. Oh, man. this is where I'm like I don't know how to turn this off alright let's go